In this presentation, we will take a look at our first method for recording insurance. In this case, we're going to take the easier option, that being to record all payments for insurance as insurance expense within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. To work this problem, we will open QuickBooks. We're going to open our simpler file, so we're going to go into our files. We're going to go into our QuickBooks data file, and we're going to go into the QuickBooks 1, and this will be the simpler version. We should have a backup copy as well that you can use to go to this point. Here's the QuickBooks file. We got the open windows open, and we are in the Home tab. You can open up the open windows by going to the View dropdown and selecting the Open Windows list. Next thing we want to take a look at is that if we see our open items for January, we had this insurance payment that we wrote down, and the payment was for $12,000. So there's two things that kind of triggered us to write this down. One, the dollar amount is pretty high, and, so, and two, it's for insurance. So we just have to think to ourselves, how do I want to record insurance? And even if I was thinking that maybe I just want to record insurance as an expense, the fact that the dollar amount is high is an indication that maybe they uh, bought a lot of insurance at one time for a longer time period. And so we might want to rethink that and make sure we have a plan to make sure that this allocation goes well. And let's see why that might be the case. So let's find the insurance then. So we're going to say, where did we report this? We're going to go to the reports drop down, company and financial. And we're going to go down to the balance sheet standard, balance sheet standard. We're going to change the date range up top to the customized reports. We're going to change that date range from 010119 to 022819. That's January 1st to just to February 28th. And OK. So now we can go to the checking account. Checking account. Double clicking on that. And we said here that it was check number 1003 for 12,000. So we should be able to not have too many transactions and find that. Here's check number 1003, safe insurance company, 12,000. Now it might be easier to find in the other side where we put it into uncategorized on the income statement. So I'm going to close this out. And notice that every transaction we have, when we enter it into the register, typically we'll have two sides, or and one being a balance sheet account, one being profit and loss or income statement. So in the income statement is where we put it into uncategorized. So let's go to the income statement or profit and loss statement by going to the reports drop down up top, go into company and financial and go into that profit and loss standard. Changing the date range once again from 010119 to 022819. And here is our information. We're looking for the uncategorized expenses. Uncategorized expenses because we wrote a check, didn't know where we wanted to put it, therefore put it to uncategorized. Double clicking on that. Here are our expenses. So we have the safe deposit here. So again, it's a big dollar amount. So that's the question of, uh, you know, what do we do with it? When it's a larger dollar amount, we might want to be more secure. And, and anytime it's insurance, that gives us a double check. Then we're just going to use the easy method here, which is to double click on this and just allocate it to the insurance expense. That's what we paid for. So if we select the drop down, we're going to just expense it at this point in time. And here we have an insurance expense. Now, note, we, we may also want to define insurance expense. I mean, there's obviously different types of insurance. Is it liability insurance? Is it, is it auto insurance? Is it health insurance? Should it be a business insurance at all? Because if it's health insurance, then there's a question as to whether it should be here at all. Probably it shouldn't be on, the, on here, although health insurance may be deductible for some type of, of businesses, but possibly not usually for U.S. on uh, the business expense. It's not really a business expense. It's something that we should deal with during tax time and see how to, how to deduct it. It's not really something that belongs here. However, liability insurance is what we would typically assume it to be, is something that should be on here. And, and we can deal with other kind of methods that might be deductible and whatnot, but, um, and how we can track those. I might, we might take a look at those at a later time, things that are tax deductible that aren't really business expenses. But for now, Note that if we're doing the bookkeeping, the, the business expense would be liability insurance. And so that's the thing that we would expect this to be, or if it's auto insurance on the business automobile, uh, the, those types of things. So we might want to put in the memo for 12 month. And 
And if we have this information, we might want to put that in the memo, what the policy terms are. So if we know it's a 12 month policy, we want to write that down because we want to be able to tell the bookkeeper or the accountant at the end of the year, the tax preparer, hey, there's an, there may have an adjusting entry. You might want to take a look at this and see if, see if you want to do something with this, if there's any adjustment that needs to be made. So let's save and close this and say yes. And then it's disappeared from here. Where did it go? Let's close this out. It went to insurance expense. So it's still in insurance expense and there it is. Now, again, why is this kind of an issue? Well, note that if I did a comparison, if we compare the two months from this month to February, I'm gonna do that by, so notice the date range is January to February. And then I select the total column and we go down to show me by month the activity. And I say, okay, here's the insurance expense for January and then it's zero for February. And, and the total is 12,000. What, what does that mean? Does that mean that we didn't pay any, we're not covered in insurance? What if we had an accident? What if there's some liability? We got sued in February. Does that mean we're not covered? Well, no, we paid 12,000 for the entire year from this point going forward. And so note that from an accrual standpoint, this doesn't make sense because it makes January look bad and February look good when in reality this 12,000 is really distorting the picture. So from that sense, from a decision making sense, we should allocate this out. And that's the adjustment that could be made at the end of the time period. Now, again, from a cash basis perspective and a tax perspective, maybe it would be okay to expense it there. It just depends on you know the tax code that we have and whatnot from a decision making perspective. It obviously is, is wrong. It distorts our decision. It makes it, we look at this and say, yeah, January was terrible. And then Fe and February was a better month. Well, no, because we just happened to pay the insurance expense for an entire year. So those are just some of the issues that would come up. And again, the easy thing for us to do is just to expense it here. If it was monthly, if we were paying monthly, it wouldn't distort the picture as much because we would pay, it might be prepaying, but only for a month. So we would still pay each month and it wouldn't look so bad. It wouldn't uh, distort our, our income from month to month. So that's what we want to be careful of. And that's what adjustment might be made at the end of the year. And we'll t discuss the second option, which is the more normal kind of adjusting option when working with an adjusting department. And that is to not put it on as an expense, but to put it on as a prepaid asset account, because then it would go on the balance sheet. And that's usually a better indication for when we go to the adjusting department, say, hey, we recorded it on the balance sheet. That's where you can see it. And then you expense the appropriate part, depending on how much time had expired uh, throughout the year and so that's usually the way that we would properly do it but we could do it this way it's kind of reversed but it would just be the same kind of thing we'd say hey we put it on the income statement you go check the income statement and pull out the amount that should still be prepaid the reason we don't usually do it this way is one it's easier to kind of see on the balance sheet we like to go to the balance sheet with our adjustment accounts typically and clean up uh, some of the the balance sheet accounts and the reason that is a lot of times is because the income statement is temporary it closes out to retained earnings. So that kind of muddies up the water. The fact that these accounts are temporary and close out muddies up the water a bit when we're trying to see uh, activity that needs to be adjusted like that. So it's easier for the adjustment department. It's easier on the, the accounting or tax preparer at the end of the year, usually if you plan on making adjusting entries to record it as uh, an asset. Now, on the other hand, if, you, if you're working with a tax preparer that you're worried that they won't pick it up, they won't make the adjusting entry, you're not working with someone that you have a good relationship with that is planning to do that, then you might just want to put it at, at an expense to force them to at least look at it in, so that you don't lose the deduction. So there's pros and cons in, in either method. It's best to have to work with someone that's, that you know how, how to do those adjustments at the end and that can help you to, to work between these two things so we do what we do and the accountant and the tax preparer does what they do to, to tweak the tweak the numbers as, as they need to to finalize whatever needs to be done at year end whether that be taxes or and or financial statements for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info